This is the Arxen 85, and it is an Explorer yacht with a twist. Obviously, it's made out of aluminium, and it also has a 7,000 nautical mile cruising range. To put that into context, that means you go from here in Southampton, turn right at the Solent, and head all the way to Buenos Aires in Argentina with fuel to spare. With a boat like this, the world is your cruising ground. You just have to decide whether you want to see icebergs or islands out of the 25 millimeter thick windows. The twist, just wait to see what they've done with the interior of this thing. There's so much to see, I can't wait to show you around. Let's go. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. We are going to sea trial this boat at some point, so now is a great time to subscribe. If you haven't already, hit that button, hit the bell icon, and you'll be notified when that sea trial goes live. Standing next to the 85 on the pontoon, it really is an imposing machine. It's got that scaled down destroyer vibe, the upright windscreens on both decks, that furrowed aluminium brow, and obviously the untreated aluminium as well. It's 12 millimeters thick with the waterline, eight millimeter thick superstructure, and it just looks very purposeful and rugged. And you can see here the opportunities for water to escape from the deck if you do take a big one over the bow. You've got the fair leads up where the cleats are, and then you've got these big scuppers all the way along. So if you get water over the deck, it's going to disperse really quickly. Now, obviously, a main feature of this particular boat is that this bare aluminium finish you get a sort of patina over time. They describe it as like a leather jacket. You may not like that look. You can have it sealed if you prefer. You can have it vinyl wrapped as well, and you can have it fared and painted. But Arxen as a brand are very conscious about these boats' footprint on the environment. So they would probably discourage it. If you really want it though, I'm sure they would. Let's get on board. <laughs> Stepping on board back here at the waterline, it's got quite a basic arrangement. You've got these bare railings, you've got more exposed welds. It's really quite simple, functional. You can, as an option, have a hydraulic bathing platform here, so that goes down into the water. You can even have a transom that folds down as well, and that opens up to this big lazarette here. We're gonna have a look at all the machinery spaces towards the end of the video. We're gonna have a lot of fun down there, so stick around if you want to see that. If I move across, over here, you can see you've got a really big bathing ladder down here. It makes it very easy to get in and out if you've got dive tanks on, that sort of thing. And as I said, two big hatches here to give you access to that lazarette space. And then up here, mounted on the transom, this is the passerelle. And it's carbon fibre, it's two parts, so you can move it around the boat really easy. Obviously, on a boat like this, you don't know what type of port you're going to end up in. So you need to be able to fix this all over the boat, whether it's on the side, whether it's on the upper deck needs to be able to move around really easily. So that's mounted there when it's not in use. Then heading up the steps into the cockpit, you've got a really nice wide passageway, loads to grab onto as you make your way up onto this main deck. Nice little drop down seat here, so you can perch right at the transom, looking out over the back of the boat as it's moving along. And then would you just look at the size of this cockpit? It's absolutely enormous. We've got a 5.8 meter tender on this boat as well. Apparently there is space for an even bigger one, but this is a big tender for a boat of this size and it's launched using these booms on either side. They've got a 1.5 ton lift capacity. You can have a deck crane if you prefer. It's all very flexible when it comes to Arxen. And these are also your flopper stoppers. Drop them in, they've got big stainless steel plates on them and as they pull up they offer some resistance to, so Arxen say, reduce roll up to 60% using no power at all. Pretty impressive. Huge amount of seating space here and you can have even more because you've got deck chairs tucked very neatly in that locker over there. So they can be arranged around this side. Deck storage is very good, as you'd imagine. Over here by the tender, you've got all the extra bits for the tender, all the jerry cans full of petrol, all neatly tucked away in one place. Now back here, this is a technical area. You've got fire suppression in here. You've got sockets as well for charging. Any toys you have back here, you can charge from here. It can also be a wet bar. This boat's quite simple with just the sink, but you can have a grill here as well if you'd prefer. And all of this on both sides, this is control for the booms. You've got the winches, you've got the push buttons there as well, so you can control everything from this space really easily. 
Moving down the port side deck, as soon as you get sort of out of the cockpit, you're met by very, very tall bulwarks with railings on top. It's important that you feel safe moving forward in a boat like this, and you certainly do. And this is quite a nice feature. All of these logos are individually cast for each boat, so they're all slightly different. Really nice little touch from Arkson. It means you have a you know, personalised touch on every single one. Really, really like that feature. There's nothing particularly glamorous about these side decks. They are made for working. They're working decks, and they're incredibly practical. These bollards, for example, they are mounted to the structure of the boat to make them as strong as possible. You've got these lovely high bulwarks, big rails on top that you can grasp onto that run all the way around the boat and these voids as well open voids they've got the boat hooks in here you could run lines in there as well just very handy to have this sort of storage in a place where you're going to be crewing the boat and talking of that you've got a side door here as well only on the port side on this deck just gives you another access point into the main saloon and then right forward we have the foredeck which is a really interesting combination of working deck but also another outdoor leisure space so you have this Nice big wrap of seating here with an opposing bench, so it's pretty sociable really. Obviously you've got a table here as well, so you can have some drinks, maybe even lunch up here on a calm day, but then you have lots of storage underneath here. You can put cushions atop this as well to make a sun pad, but again, it's also utilitarian, tough workboat like I keep saying it, but it's true. This is a 250 kilogram crane, so you can lift tenders, toys in and out of the water with this, put things up onto the foredeck. You could have this completely clear and just have it as another tender deck if you want totally up to you as a potential owner of an Arxon 85. Now, the anchors, very important on a boat like this. You don't know where you might end up anchoring. You don't know how long for either. So you have to have redundancy. They've gone for a 130 kilogram ultramarine anchor on one side and a 90 kilogram claw anchor on the other. You've got 130 meters of chain on both sides, 14 millimeters thick. So you should be pretty secure wherever it is you end up. But I think one of the most fascinating things about the Arxon 85 is what they've done with the interior. So let's head in there. Now, in contrast to that really quite unflinching, tough exterior, all aluminium, the interior, oh, it's a proper door, isn't it? The interior couldn't be any different from that. It is a proper oasis. And you think Explorer boat and you think teak and really quite safe and traditional. That's not the case on the 85, as we will discover as we go through the saloon. But I'm going to start back here because there's some cool stuff going on. This is your internal access to the upper deck. We'll have a good look at that after we've done this deck. But this is a really clever area because you've got little details like this. The seat down here pops up with a little support. Take your boots on and off. If you've got wet gear on, you have this huge cupboard here, which is heated. So you can put all your wet gear in there and dry it off. If that doesn't work, you've got the day head slash wet room over here. This is absolutely enormous and it's fitted out so that you can hang kit in there and it will dry off onto a, a drained floor. And it's a big space as well with a shower. So if people have been swimming, they can come in here, not go too far into the boat and they've got somewhere to have a shower and a toilet, of course, in a really useful position. And it feels a bit like a porch or a boot room because you can fully enclose this space. How about that? Really nice door, love the colour as well. And that means that if people are coming in and out, you don't want all the heat rushing out, especially if you're somewhere very, very cold. So you can shut that, but people can still come in and out of that door. Really, really clever solution. But let's keep moving forward because there's lots to enjoy on this deck. Now, this is the only dinette on this level. It's obviously quite modest for a boat of this size. This is what the owner wanted if you want a bigger one. You can have it, but he wanted one here that's cosy, close to the galley, in the middle of the boat so you don't feel the conditions too much if you're eating here when you're on passage. And then it is opposite this wonderful, very home from home feeling galley. Of course, you could be on this boat for weeks and weeks on end. So you need a good space to cook and store things. And this is great. And actually there's enough space here, although it's U-shaped so you can brace yourself if you're going through the rollers, you can pass each other if there are two people working in this galley. Works very nicely. Up here, you've got your cooling space. There is more cooling space elsewhere on the boat. We'll look at that later on, but this is your big domestic galley fridge. You've got a professional dishwasher down there, which apparently can turn a load around in eight minutes. Twin sinks with your hot tap as well, so you don't need a kettle to make your cups of tea. Very important wherever you're in the world, you need your tea. And then they're very conscious about looking after waste on this boat. They don't want this thing to arrive at some remote island and then dump all of its waste all over the place to places that may not have the facilities. So you have huge bins up here. So you've got lots of space to store your trash in the galley and other places elsewhere in the boats, in the forepeak, in the lazarette that can handle all of your rubbish. 
And you've got the usual stuff as well. You've got space for your coffee machine, toaster, things like that. Nice under lighting here. It's a really nice space. And of course, something I always like to see, the fiddled edges. Maybe not as tall as a Nordhavens, but still pretty good. It means when it rolls around, if it rolls around, things aren't gonna come flying off. And there's some lovely detailing. I think Design Unlimited, who designed the interior, have done a fabulous job. It's practical, it's safe. You've got your handrails, but there's some really nice, luxurious touches as well. I love these handles they've used down here. They've got the pop catches, so they're really secure, but you've got the lovely leather loops as well. And then they all soft close and then pop shut. There's a really nice form function divide going on here. It's beautiful. And I really like what they've done with this area forward here. This I think is quite unexpected. Just this enormous lounging area. No table up here except for this low coffee table that you can move around. But then it's just really nice, comfortable lounging space where you can enjoy the interior. You can still enjoy the views out. Penguins, icebergs, islands, whatever it may be. You've got a great view of it from this part of the deck. And then you'll notice that although we may not have a full helm down here, you have got what they call the control station. And you can see it's got a lid here, so it can be completely folded away. You'd never know it's there. But lift it up and you have pretty much full control. No steering wheel, but you've got throttles, you've got bow thruster, autopilot, and then through this screen, which has got the Arcs and proprietary software to control the boat, all the digital switching, you have oversight of absolutely everything from power consumption, whether that's shore power generator, the battery bank, you've got all your engine information for when the boat's on passage, and then the fuel switching, which we'll go to in a bit more detail when we're in the engine room. But you do all of that from here. It's all digital. You can open valves here. You can use the two pumps. There's a filter pump and a transfer pump. So you can transfer fuel at a higher rate than through the filter pump. And you do all of that from under your fingertips here. You've got the four holding tanks here and then the two day tanks as well. It's a really smart system. And it means you can bunker easy. It means you can switch fuel from side to side. If the boat's listing, you can see, here we've got the trim monitor down here. So you can see the angle of lean and you can move the fluids around as you see fit to get the boat at the best trim. And it's the same with the fresh water. Three fresh water tanks, one dedicated to drinking water, but again, you can move the fluids around that area to help balance the boat as well as possible. And then you've got other things like being able to see whether all the hatches are closed. Everything should be green. If you want to go to sea, it's all watersite compartments. They should all be green. Again, you can see all of that from up here. It's really, really easy to use. And I should mention there is manual backup for all of this. And of course, another screen on the upper deck. So let's look there now. There's no external link between the decks on the 85, so you rely heavily on these internal staircases. They're beautifully done though, I have to say. I love this wooden detailing that curves all the way around, this lovely leather-lined handhold, but they are a little bit tight, especially if you're carrying things. It might feel like a little bit of a squeeze, but there's no issue with space when you get up to the upper deck. And though you've not got a formal galley up here, you've got a really nice servery. So you've got lots of storage along here, two big fridge drawers down here, and then another nice big sink. And this has also got a hot tap, so you can make your hot drinks. Of course, there's a coffee machine up here as well. And lots of nice open counter space, again, with a good fiddled edge. And then we have the dinette. And this is interesting, because this drops right down. There's an infill cushion, and you can make a day bed here. So if someone's on watch, you want to chill out, but you still want to be up here where the action is, you can recline and lie down here and have a bit of a rest. But also, what a lovely elevated place to eat inside. If the weather's not great, pouring down, snowing, you want to eat, you have that nice elevated view, this is great. As is this. Love a good old chart table. You don't see these very often, but this is really nicely executed. Lovely big flat space here, so the skipper can do any chart work manually. You've got the logbook here, of course, another MFD, all the communication equipment here, and then this is a nice touch. Proper drawer here for charting, so you can get all your Admiralty charts in there, safely stowed away. They're not going to get creased and curled up. You know exactly where they are. And then we come to the helm station. These seats, these are seats, I should say, that you are probably going to spend a lot of time in, and my goodness, they are comfortable. As you can see, they swivel around so you can make them part of the action if you're not driving the boat. And you can, if you want, have controls in the armrest. Obviously, you've got these four screens behind me. There's more smaller screens up ahead, but these are the major screens that you'll be using. And you can flick between those using an armrest control if you want. Obviously, this boat doesn't have it, but you have yeah, seriously high-end navigation equipment and all of the same functionality as downstairs when it comes to digital switching as well. Talk a bit about performance, I suppose. I talked about that nine knot cruising speed. Well, it will top out at 14 knots with those twin 350 horsepower Scania's, but at nine knots, 
they're consuming just 26 litres an hour between them. That is pretty extraordinary, and that is why you get that astonishing 7,000 nautical mile range. But in close quarters like this inside a marina, you'll be doing the manoeuvring probably from one of the wing stations. So let's head out there. There are side doors on both sides of this deck, so you have equal access from either side out onto the side deck. And you can actually link all the way around on this deck. It's connected all the way through, which is really nice. And I mentioned the wing stations. Well, there are actually three on this deck. We've got one here on the port side, and as you can see, you've got your throttles again, thruster, you've got a screen here so you can see depth and things like that, and you've got the, the wheel as well, all very neatly tucked underneath this, of course, aluminium shell. You don't feel quite as protected up here because you haven't got the overhang, but you've still got very nice high guardrails, and you probably saw the clips in the drying locker downstairs, and that means you can clip on all the way around the boat, so if it's really rough, you know you're safe and secure. And again, this sort of workboat style design gives way to more, slightly more luxurious space back here where you have this really nice outer dinette. It's fully covered by this thick aluminium overhead, but you have got some good outdoor seating back here and another wing station tucked down here. So if you're mooring stern too, you've got a better view of the back end of the boat. This ladder up here, that leads up to the mast. So if you need to maintain either navigation equipment, anything like that, you have easy access up there through a hatch. And let's talk about the doors on this boat because you have watertight internal doors as well. And they are seriously, seriously tough. And they take quite a lot of effort to open and close. So you have to bear that in mind. You're probably going to need two hands every time you're doing it. So if you're carrying things, it's quite awkward to do it with one hand, but of course that's what comes with having watertight doors absolutely everywhere. We keep moving round, as I said, you can loop round really easily. It's all symmetrical, you have exactly the amount of same space on both sides. Here we have the exhaust outlet here, it's dry exhaust, it comes up and vents up here. And we talk about the glazing as well, 25 millimetres thick. It's tinted downstairs to help reflect the sun so you're not having to use so much energy to keep the boat cool, but it's nice and clear up here so you have the best possible view out from this elevated area. Another wing station here, and this is quite an interesting touch. You've got heated nozzles here to wash the windscreen. So if you're in really, really cold environment, you know that you can still clear the windscreens. And of course, commercial spec windscreen wipers all the way around. And this is easily one of my favorite parts of this boat. It's such a nice viewing platform, forward of the helm. You've got this amazing view out over that really purposeful bow. You can just picture yourself up here, edging into a really secluded cove, nudging up towards the ice shelves. I mean, that is genuinely possible on a boat like this. Hard to imagine here, stuck in a corner of Ocean Village in Southampton, but those are the possibilities. And we also have the solar panels here. I mentioned those earlier on. This is where they sit. And if you like the idea of some more technical information, well, there's plenty of that to come on the lower deck. So let's head down there. Onto the lower deck then, and we're gonna head straight amidships into the owner suite. And again, it's just such a surprise to what you think an explorer yacht is going to be like. You think if you're a traditional explorer, all that teak, it's quite traditional, it's quite plain. It's not the case here. I know Bering are doing things a bit differently over in Turkey, but this really feels so fresh for a boat of this nature. And look at the headroom down here. It's over two meters throughout on the interior it feels incredibly spacious and look at the storage again like the galley you know this is a boat you're going to live on board for long periods of time you need spaces to put your stuff and you've got lots of it here on this side of the cabin a nice little couch in the corner there bureau over there under the tv it's really nicely done very very homely and i think the real surprise is the is the bathroom it's absolutely extraordinary in here just look at the size of this shower cubicle, which also doubles up as a steam room. It is vast. You've got this nice wooden benching here as well. I really like the way they've carried the colour scheme from the upper decks down here. Works really nicely in the bathroom. It's a great space and lots of storage in here as well. Again, real sort of big fitments, home from home fitments. It doesn't really feel like a boat. It feels like a really comfortable room in a house. If we carry on forward, we will find the guest accommodation. Now over on this side, we have the captain's cabin. I'll tell you a bit more about that later on because there is yet another surprise in store. But we'll carry on forward to find the guest accommodation. Again, look at this hallway. You've got a handhold, always a handhold somewhere, something to steady yourself when you're walking through this boat. And we have identical guest cabins here. They can be set up as doubles or twins. This one, as you can well see, is set up as a double, leaving you space on this side to get in and out of bed. Just note the headroom again. Look how much of it is over my head. 
six foot tall. If you're watching my videos, you know that by now, but if you haven't, I'm six foot tall. And there is loads of space, loads of storage. Both of them have got their own bathrooms. And if we switch over to this side, starboard side one, this is set up as the twin. If you've got kids, so they want to share a bed, you can slide them apart and have two single beds. You can also have drop down bunks in both of these. So you can have three berths in each cabin if you want. The sleeping space is very versatile. We'll see more of that as we move forward. As I said, you've got private bathrooms for each cabin. No day head on this lower deck. You don't need it. Every cabin has a bathroom. Again, another handhold. Love the use of lighting as well. It's really bright and clean and it makes it feel bigger as well. Storage on both sides, these are just cupboards. And then these big watertight doors, you see them dotted all along here. Really serious stuff, even within the interior spaces. And then we have split cabins here. So you've got identical bunk cabins with bathrooms. And this is another really flexible area because if you've got crew on board, it's a perfect crew space. But if you want to have extra guests, the bunks are decent enough that guests will be able to stay on here. You're cruising around the world, meeting friends, meeting people. Don't quite know how many people might be on board at any one time. You have very flexible sleeping space on board this boat. And right forward, there's access to an enormous four peak locker. We have huge amounts of storage. We're going to cut away of that from the deck for you. But now let's head back to that captain's cabin. Because as I said, there's a bit of a surprise in store. Now this is a captain's cabin on this boat. You can have this as an office or a study if you want. If you feel like this is surplus to requirements, obviously this captain very well looked after, but this space is flexible, but it works very well as a captain's cabin. This is a very nice space for this size of boat. Big separate shower cubicle here, not finished to quite the same standard as the one in the owner's cabin, but it's still a good size, toilet sink, all that usual stuff. But crucially, through yet another watertight door, it connects directly to the machinery spaces. And this is where the engineers out there will probably start salivating. I mentioned the batteries on this boat earlier on in the film. Well, this is the battery room. It's totally separately climate controlled. It's noticeably cooler in here than it is through there in the interior. It has separate fire suppression. Everything is really neatly labeled, easy to get to. Very, very nice installation. And then through yet another door, separating this area from the main engine room, we have the engine room itself. This then is the main part of the engine room. Let's get that door closed. Oh. It's a pretty amazing space. I've been on boats twice this size with half the amount of kit that feel a lot more cramped than this. They have done a good job of getting this in here. Now here we've got the twin 20 kilowatt generators. See they're in parallel, so they will fire up and down depending on how much power the boat's using, how much it needs to use the generators. You've got that big battery bank as well, don't forget. So that will take a lot of the load if the hotel services are being lightly used. Over in this corner, we have the fuel transfer system. Now we saw this in digital form up on the screen on the main deck, but this is what it looks like in the flesh. And you can see all this beautifully arranged pipework with all the flows on it. So you can see where everything's flowing. And if those screens go down and you need to do it manually, you can, you see, you've got all these valves. They are actuated electronically, but you can use them manually, of course. And if your fuel pumps go down, you can even use this rather fabulous old school handle to manually pump fuel across between the various tanks. This is the filter pump here. You can see it's got the filters on it, but then if you want to do high speed transfer, it's not filtered, but you're not going to put that stuff into the day tanks to go through the bunker tanks. You can do it faster. You've got this big high capacity pump down here, but everything that goes into the day tanks is filtered. Very important. Obviously, if you've got lots of fuel sitting on board for a long time. If you're picking up fuel from places where you don't know how good the fuel is, you want beautifully clean fuel going into those day tanks. And talking of that, you've also got an oily water tank as well. So anything that comes off the engines that you don't want going into the sea, you can store and pump when you get into shore. And on that note, over here, we have the sewage treatment plant. So if you're in places where you can't pump out or you don't want to pump out, or you haven't got shoreside facilities to pump out, you can treat all of the water coming out of the showers and the toilets over here on this section. So everything coming out of the gray tank, the black tank can go into there, be treated and come out as a sterile liquid that it's fine to discharge overboard. And then we're on to the meat of the engine room, of course, so the engines, these 350 horsepower Scanias, which teamed with this hull are so efficient. At nine knots, they're using 26 liters per hour combined. Frankly, quite incredible when you think about the size of this boat. It's only got 700 horsepower, but 
that's all it needs. It works an absolute treat. And then we have the engineering of these systems down here. This boat was built by White Shipyard over on the Isle of Wight. They generally build fast ferries, they build fast transfer vessels, commercial stuff. And you can see all of that experience in the way that all of this stuff is executed. Just look at the raw water strainers down there. They are absolutely gigantic. And of course you have backup for backup. One fails, you've got another one ready to go. So you can always keep on plugging through. And that's a really important part about this boat is being able to work on things on the go. And the Lazarette is a very key part of that story. So let's check it out. Again, you know, this is a working area, but look at the headroom in here. Full standing headroom for someone of six foot, absolutely no problem. And this, so there's a lot going on here. This is a workshop. You've got a full working table over there, a vise, a drill, loads and loads of tools, all really neatly stored away. You've got all your dive tanks neatly stored up here. Obviously, it's also the laundry room. You've got a purifier for the water, so this connects all of the dock water coming on board, is purified in these filters before it goes onto the boat and there's a dedicated drinking tank. So everything from the water maker, and this is only going into one tank. It never mixes the water that you might use to wash the boat. Access to all the steering here. Again, there's two sets of everything. So you've got a backup if one goes down, you've got another one, and then just lots of big storage bins here. So you've got loads of places to put things like rubbish. If you need to store cardboard for long periods, you can stow all of that stuff down here, and it's very easy to get to. And if we go through this hatch here, we're back onto the bathing platform where we started the tour. Thank you very much for watching that tour of the Arxon 85. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a like and leave us some comments as well. I'd love to know what you think about this thing. To me, it seems an incredibly impressive machine. And do remember to subscribe because as I said, we are hopefully gonna sea trial this boat in the very near future. And I guarantee you will want to watch that. And if you like your Explorer Yachts, we've got some more of that because you can watch our tour of the San Lorenzo 500 Arrow up here. It's got a helicopter. Why wouldn't you want to watch that? And then I'll put some sea trial stuff down here as well. If you'd like to subscribe, you can click up there. Thanks again for watching. This is Yacht Buyer. I'm Jack Haynes.